Hi, friends. Hello. Hi, Googly. Hi, Vicky. Welcome back to Bee Bear Book Club. Mm. Aren't we happy everybody's come back again? Of course. Yes. Today we're going to hear a story about Fivel's flying horses. Flying horses? Do you think that is like an animal that flies in the air? That's pretty cool. It is, but can I give you a clue? Okay. There is something in this book called a carousel. Have you ever heard of a carousel? Oh, is that the rocket they put on the back of the horse to make it fly? <gasps> no. Oh. A carousel is really something that we have today. We might call it a merry-go-round. Did you I ever love merry-go-rounds. I thought you might. Oh, those are so much fun. You go around and around. Around and around. And, and go up and these down. horses go around and around and up and down. But Fival has a story from very, very, very long ago. Oh. There are lots of things in this book that won't look like our world today. There are different kinds of bicycles and there are different kinds of clothes people wear. Ooh. When we're reading this story, Googly, why don't you see if you can find some different kinds of things that don't look like the kind we have now? Hmm. They were from long ago. And Fivel has a job that not many people have today either. He was a wood carver. Ooh. <gasps> Do you know what a wood carver does? Do you know? Is it someone that eats a lot of wood? They don't eat a lot of wood, oh. but they definitely do something with wood. Ooh. They take the wood and they turn it into things like flying horses. Fivel's gonna do something really interesting with wood carving in oh. here because Fivel really misses his family. Aww, we'll find so out how wood carving helps him get his family all back together again. Wonderful. And Does that sound good? And what part is, is the, the wood carved rocket ship that makes the course fly? Ah, uh, I'm afraid that prediction might not come true in this story. Aww. But okay. we'll, we'll check and see. You never know. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Come and take a look. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Let's all read a book. We can read along. We can sing some songs. We can learn a play today. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Come and take a look. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Let's all read a book. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Let's all have some fun. It's the Bee Bear Book Club. Welcome, everyone. Hi, friends, and welcome to Bee Bear Book Club, where we can read stories together. My name is Heidi, and I am the author of this book. I wrote the words. The illustrator is Johanna Vandersteer. She drew the pictures. Today's book is called Fivel's Flying Horses. Take a look at the cover. What do you see? You see a carousel. This book is about a merry-go-round or a carousel. It's also about an immigrant named Fivel. An immigrant is somebody who came here from another country. Let's see what happens next. Fivel's Flying Horses. Fivel came to America with five dollars in his pocket. He had to leave his wife Goldie and his four children behind when he crossed the sea in search of a better life. Don't worry, Papa. I will protect the family while you are gone, said Herschel, his proud oldest son. And I will carve wood to earn extra money, said Shmuel, his gentle youngest boy. I will dance to lift Mama's spirits, said Sasha, his little prima ballerina. Lena, only a baby, was too young to even say goodbye. Fivel knew it would be months, even years, before he could earn enough money to arrange passage for his family. By the time they were reunited, 
Lena would probably be a young lady and Shmuel a grown man. How do you think Fivel felt leaving his family behind? Bad. Bad. He might not see them for many years. In the old country, Fivel, his father and his grandfather had been wood carvers. They had carved the ornate reading desks that held the Torah scrolls and the fearsome lions that guarded the holy arks in synagogues throughout their province. In New York, he found work as a furniture maker on the Lower East Side. Instead of carving lions and eagles, Fievel spent his days making tables, chairs, and dressers. In his spare time, he carved combs for fashionable ladies. It was hard work, but Fievel didn't mind. With each finished piece, he knew he was one step closer to sending for his family. One day, his cousin Michael suggested an outing. On the beach in Brooklyn, there is an amusement park called Coney Island with games of chance, Ferris wheels, and fortune tellers. They say there are so many lights that at night it glows like a million stars. Fortune tellers, glittering lights. Bible had never heard of such a place. I don't think so, Michael. I need to save my pennies. In that case, I will treat you. We will go this weekend. That Sunday morning, the two hopped on the trolley to Coney Island. Have ever any of you ever been to an amusement park before? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fun. Yeah. As he stepped off the trolley, Fievel pinched himself to make sure he wasn't dreaming. Food stands, dance halls, and game parlors lined the boardwalks. He had never seen so many smiling faces. Fievel gazed in wonderment at the colorful clowns and fortune tellers who roamed the streets. For five cents, you could throw a ball into a hoop and win a giant purple doll. Right before his eyes, a man was being shot out of a cannon. Children on the roller coaster shrieked with excitement. In the distance, Fievel heard organ music. He followed the sound to a magnificent wooden carousel. Its beautifully carved horses seemed to leap through the air. Each creature adorned with its sparkling jewels, flashing buckles, and flowing ribbons looked like something out of the most wonderful dream. Fievel remembered a music box he had seen as a child. When it was opened, a glittering carousel appeared and horses danced round and round to the music. Come on, Fievel, let's get something to eat. I'm hungry, said Michael. But Fievel was unable to tear himself away. Gazing at the brilliantly painted chariots with their gold and silver leaf, he thought, how I wish I could create something like this with my chisel and brush, something that children would cherish. And that's when he saw the sign, wanted experienced woodcarver. Rushing into the shop, Fievel applied for the job and was hired. Can you guess what kind of job he has? What's he going to do? What's he going to create? Merry go round. Right, he's gonna carve the carousel horses for the carousel, for the merry go round. As chief apprentice to the owner, Mr. Sumner Nathanson, Fievel was entrusted with the task of carving and embellishing the horses for the next Coney Island carousel. As he worked, Fievel sang songs from the old country. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala laika, play bala laika. Tumbala laika, happy will be. What are you singing, asked Avram, a younger apprentice. <sighs> it's a love song I sang to Goldie when we first met, Fievel answered wistfully. Remembering his wife's silky hair, Fievel put the finishing touches on his first horse, a glorious creature with a long golden mane, as bright as sunshine. I shall call this horse Goldie, he announced. Then he carved her name in tiny letters beneath the saddle. He hoped Mr. Nathanson wouldn't mind. 
he thought of his son Herschel as he carved the next horse, a restless beast whose speed and power made him stand out. My eldest son is a proud young man, he told Avram. Make sure you paint this horse a regal blue color. It took Fievel a long time to complete his third horse, a kind, gentle creature. He etched deer in its bridle in honor of Shmuel, his youngest son, whose days were spent in the forest carving wood. Day and night, Fievel toiled away in the carousel shop, carving, sanding, painting, and chiseling. On Shabbat, he rested. Sometimes he went to the synagogue and sang blessings and prayers. The closer he came to completing his carousel, the louder he sang. Why do you think Fievel's singing with joy? Why is he happy? Because he likes horses. He likes horses and he's almost done carving his carousel. It took Fievel three years to complete the carousel. Cousin Michael and his family came to watch as Mr. Nathanson turned it on for the very first time. Papa, look at the horses fly round and round, shouted Michael's son. Cousin Fievel's carousel is a circle that never ends. Tears glistened in Fievel's eyes as his beautiful horses galloped gracefully in the air, among them Goldie, Herschel, Shmuel, Sasha, and Lena. Some of the horses were gentle and some were fierce. Some spoke of happiness and love, some of sadness and loss. Aren't you going to ride the carousel, Fievel? shouted Mr. Nathanson. Fievel shook his head. No, thank you, Mr. Nathanson. I prefer to wait until my wife and four children are here to enjoy it with me. With the wages you've paid me, I've saved enough money to send for my family. And when at last Fievel's family arrived in America, they rode the carousel together and the circle was complete. The end. Why do you think Fievel didn't want to ride the carousel right away at the end? Because he wanted his family to come. He wanted his family to come. He was waiting for his family. Now this story is sad, but it's also happy. Why do you think it's a sad story? What because makes it sad? Because he had to leave his family. He had to leave his family behind. But it's also happy. And why is it happy? Because they enjoyed He created this beautiful carousel horse that children would enjoy. And his family could join him in America after three long years. Now, Fievel is an immigrant, which means he came to America from another country. So do you know any immigrants? Do you know people from your school who came here from another country? They maybe they come from another my, country. My brother. Your brother, and your grandma. Good. So we all come from somewhere. So that's the end of our story today. And thank you for reading with us today. You are wonderful listeners. We hope you join us again next time for Be Bear Book Club. Thank you. All right, let's see what I got in the mail today. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it's my subscription to Mangoes Monthly. Yeah, oh, I'm going to read that later. All right. What's this? What's this? What's this? Ooh. Oh, it's a letter from me, Mum. Hey. Love to hear from you, Mum. I'll put that little inside for later. And uh, what's this? What's this? What's this here? Oh, a bill. <laughs> what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Yeah, that's all of them. Oh, great. There we go. Thank you. All right. So that's all the mail we. Hello, a package. Who is this addressed to? Oh, Hardy de Hops Hill. Oh, no, it's, it's a package for Hardy. Yeah, that's not, I should tell him about it. Oh, but, oh, but he's away all day. Hmm, well, leave this right here for him. I wonder what's inside. Hmm, well, I probably shouldn't open it. It's not addressed to me. 
But then, what if, um, what if what's inside here is, um, does there something might go bad? Yeah, yeah, that's it. What if something in this could go bad? Like, um, like, uh, like, a, like some kind of a fruit? And then, then Hardy wouldn't have his fruit. All because I didn't open it. But it doesn't belong to me, so I probably shouldn't. But I probably should, because I really want to know what's inside. Uh, but I probably shouldn't, because it's not mine. Oh, look at what happened. Look at what was that? You all heard that too, right? Is it? Is that coming from inside the box? <coughs> it is. Oh, that is fantastic. Open. Look at that. Open. Close. Open and close. Yeah. Open and close. Yeah. Okay. Open and close. Open and close. The box is open. The box is closed. The box is open. The box is closed. Oh man, this is fantastic. I've got to tell everyone about this. It's a box that makes noise when it's open. Ha! Oh man, uh, I, I, I've got to tell everyone. I should, uh, what do you think makes it do that? You're right, doesn't matter. Oh, I'm going to sell tickets. That's what I'm going to do. All right, I'll be right back. Watch the box for me. Ha! <laughs> I'll teach him to open somebody else's mail. And now, I will play myself out. Tell you, it's just been a day. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hello. It is I, Grandpa Lizard, here to talk to you about the letter O. Hmm. Yes. There it is. Look at that. Letter O. Hmm. Now, O, besides being nice and round like a ball, is also the beginning of some wonderful words that we can start with the letter O. Let's, let's talk about a few of them, shall we? Hmm. Now, let's start with open. There it is, open. Yes. Open is, is, is a great O word. If somebody sends you a letter or a package or you get a, a present of some kind, then you want to open it. And that's a good O word. Thank you, open. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> another good one. On. That's a nice simple one. Look at that. Just two letters. Just two letters. Just the O and then the N. On is like when you want to turn on a light switch. So it's getting a bit dark. You decide, I need some light in here. I'm going to turn on a light. Hmm. Thank you. On. Wonderful. Another good one. Outside. What's well, a long one? We've followed up the short one with a long one there. Hmm. Outside is wonderful, old word. Because when you're outside in, in all the, the beautiful sky and the beautiful sun, you just you feel good and happy. Hmm. So that's a good one. And another one, old, which is what I am. Very, very old. Old means you've been around for a long time. Hmm. Yes, when something is old, old, it's been around for a while. Yes, thank you, old. Thank you. I don't need to see it anymore. I know what I am. Hmm. And uh, let's see, what's our last one? Oh, out of time. Out. Yes, that's a good one. I am out of time. Thank you, out. Must be going. Got so many things to do today. Thank you, friends. Enjoy your day. Welcome to Bee Bear. Let's spell some words. Hola, everybody. Hey, guys. Good eye, mates. Hey, y'all, wait up. What y'all gonna do today? We're gonna spell some words. Yes. Sue, that's my mama's name. So 
Saga. Sugar. Sugar. Good eye. Goodbye. Come on, S. See you later. See y'all later. Bye. Brilliant. Yeah, y'all, that was really fun. Looks like we got another word headed our way. <laughs> okay, so what did you think of the book? You liked it? You like all the horses? It's very interesting, right? Someone, it makes all those carousel horses, huh? Yeah, I liked it. You liked it? That's good. Good. Yeah, you liked it? What was your favorite part? Um, what, was it something to do with the horses, maybe? Yeah, it was the horses. Okay, what, what, what did you think of the horses? I liked the horses. The horses were nice, right? Yeah, very talented. That's a really fun job, isn't it? Yeah. Do you have a favorite thing you love to do? Like, like the, the person in the book's favorite thing was to make horses for carousels. Do you have a favorite thing you love to do? I like to play with my dog. That's a fantastic thing to do. Wonderful. Is there something that you're really good at that you love doing? Um, watching TV. Watching TV? Well, that is a very fun thing to do. I don't know. I don't, I don't, hmm. There might be a job for that. Wait a minute. TV producer. Yep, that's a good job. That's a good job for that. Excellent. That's a good thing to learn. Well, thank you very much again. Bye. Bye. I will see you next time. <laughs> Counting around the park. There is one sun in the sky. How many clouds? One, two. There are two clouds. How many swings? One, two, three. There are three swings. How many benches? One, two, three, four. There are four benches. How many people? One, two, three, four, five. There are five people. How many flowers? One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six flowers. How many petals? One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven petals. How many bars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight bars. How many apples? One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine apples. How many ants? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten ants. Good job.
book distribution for the Bee Bear Book Club is supported by a grant from the Brookline Community Foundation. Puppets designed and operated by Dogtoon Media and the Puppet Showplace.